Okay, good morning, Pathfinders. Uh, while I get my PowerPoint set up, uh, it's uh, a very lovely weather here in Belize. And um, I do hope that this presentation would be one that would be exciting. If you notice, I'm in the jungle deep forest of Belize, and we're going to be identifying. You know, uh, Adrian, you're in a presenter mode at the moment. If it's possible, just change the setting, yeah. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Yeah. And um, I do hope that uh, I take you to places. Uh, we have three places. Uh, the challenge that I had was to get some species from the North American division, from the British area, and also from South Africa. So uh, you're going to have a diversity of animal species. And I, I do hope and I pray that this presentation would be one that would be quite exciting as we adjourn to these different places. Okay, so let me get it started. Uh, we're gonna ha we have seven uh, requirements. I'm, I'm gonna try to go briefly through uh, amidst all of them. I will not try to take the whole hour or so. So if there's a question that or, or was not that you would like to ask as you go along, then you can feel free to put it on the group chat, right? So these are seven requirements you're gonna be tackling. Uh, you guys have your worksheets that you, I believe you have downloaded and you'll be able to put them in, type in, in your answers so you can later on give it to your directors for approval, right? Uh, let's go straight into it. Characteristics of reptiles. All right, you can always put it in the group chat. What do you think are some of the characteristics of reptiles? Well, one of the basic ones, as I always teach my students because I'm a teacher, is that they are cold-blooded creatures. Okay, reptiles are cold-blooded animals. They are thick-skinned, all right? Uh, most have scales and reproduce by egg laying, okay? Um, but several give birth to live young. Uh, the lack of larval stage distinguishes reptiles from all amphibians because you may be saying, okay, I'm, uh, frogs, what about frogs? You know, frogs are cold-blooded as well, but these are some of the distinct features that would uh, bring difference in regards to reptiles. Now, here's some interesting facts. I'm gonna be briefly going through some of them. Uh, interesting facts about reptiles. Lizards and snakes smell with their tongue. Quite interesting, right? Fascinating creatures. They smell with their tongue. The smallest reptile is thought to be the mini chameleon from Madagascar, which only grows for about a few inches in length. The biggest reptile is the saltwater crocodile. All right, I, I mean, when I, when I saw this research, I said, whoa, I mean, 2,000 pounds and 12 feet, 12 and a half feet long. This is a huge crocodile, right? It's bigger than myself. Reptiles are born on land and are born with strong instincts that are on their own at their boat, uh, at their birth. Right, so these are magnificent creatures. Now, I'm an animal lover. I, one of my favorite channels is um, Animal Planet. I, me and my little son, we sit together and we watch these amazing creatures, right? Uh, the world is inhabited by at least 250 species of turtles, 25 species of crocodiles, um, sorry, 5,500 species of snakes, and 3,000 species of lizards. Imagine in this entire planet, in the green world. Uh, most of them are carnivorous. Carnivorous simply mean that they eat meat, all right? They eat insects, uh, reptiles, and other animals. Uh, reptiles eat to 30 to 50 times less food than birds and mammals, okay? These are just some interesting facts that we would like to um, share with you guys. Some snakes have over 300 pairs of ribs. Now you imagine. The green anaconda is the heaviest snake, while the reticulated python is the longest snake. All right. Now, if you do not know which uh, how they look like, again, you can simply Google and you can find how they look like. The fastest reptile is the spiny-tailed iguana, which can run up to 20 miles per hour. The fastest snake is the black mamba. Those who live in the South African region, you would be familiar with this particular um, snake, the black mamba. All right. Now, question. No. Uh, what are just what? give two characteristics of reptiles in the end group chat that you that you can recall that I mentioned, right? List list two characteristics of reptiles. 
Then the next question would be, with what do lizards use to smell? What do they use in order for them to smell in their surrounding? All right, you can always put your, your answers there as we go along, okay? And remember, due to time, again, we're just gonna be posing the, we're gonna be viewing the questions and, and the answers as, the, we, as we go along, okay? And what is the biggest reptile? Okay, th these are just a few questions to start off so we can keep, keep those facts in mind. Now, there are 15 examples of reptiles and this is where my challenge came in because I needed to have research and find, I, I found just five of each region and whilst you guys and, and you're in your hometown, uh, you can simply find the next 10 to match these five I'm gonna be sharing okay now here we go we're gonna go up north up in the north okay the alligator snapping turtle all right now it is known by its name all right there's an image of it it's it, it mostly found in southeastern united states all right the alligator snapping turtle is the world's largest freshwater turtle all right, I mean, th these are huge. Um, it, it has a cousin, uh, which is the snapping turtle. Um, by its larger size and rigid shell, you can easily be distinguished by those, to hence reason why they call it the alligator snapping turtle. Because if you look at the picture, you see the shell, how it looks, it almost looks as similar as that of the back of a, of a crocodile. All right, on the tip of its tongue, the alligator snapping turtle is a, has a, has a worm-like extension, which attracts fish whenever it comes by. And the next moment you know it, it's already snapped the fish and, and that's how it, it feeds, all right? So that, that's the, the first uh, reptile that is found in the Southeastern United States, the alligator snapping turtle, okay? The other one is known as the American alligator, all right? The American alligator is the largest of the world's two alligator species. The other which is the Chinese alligator, all right? Males can reach up to 15 feet in length. And I believe we have some of these same species found here in our country, Belize, which are huge, um, uh, 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 sorry, alligators. It may be king of the alligators, but the American alligator is smaller than the American crocodile, a species in which it shares its southernmost part of its range. All right. This species is found in fresh water where it feeds on wide range of prey, including fish, birds, mammals, and other reptiles. Okay. So the American alligator is the largest, one of the largest alligator of the two species that was just mentioned earlier. The other one is the American crocodile. Let me just make a quick, a quick correction there. It's not the American alligator that we have in our country. It's the one, this is the one that we have, the crocodile. I forgot the distinction between the, the, the alligator and the crocodile, okay? Now, the American crocodile is a large crocodile found in North America and also in the Central America. The species is also found in South, Southern Florida Okay, where it shares a, its range along with the American alligator. Okay, it, it's clearly distinguished because it has a pale gray skin and a pointed snout. All right, the snout is a bit longer than that of the alligator. All right, the species lives in the coastal areas in some rivers. It is found in brackish water. Now, what do we mean by brackish water? It simply means a mixture of fresh and salt water, hence the reason why it is so diversatile in its surrounding and its ecosystem. Um, it has a varied diet that includes fish, mammals, reptiles, and even birds. Okay, so the American crocodile is, is again one of the one of the reptiles found in North America, but also be included in Central America and also Florida. Okay, here's the other one, the Carolina anole. Okay, now this is a new, a new species to me. I, I, I when I was researching it, I, I got to, I get a sample of how it looks like. There we have it. 
is a small lizard. It reaches a maximum length of approximately eight inches in length or 20 centimeters, also known as American chameleon due to its ability to change color because this little insect, right? This little lizard, sorry, is, is, is diversatile in its, in its pigmentation of the skin. The name is misleading as it is not a true chameleon. The Carolina alone is usually either bright green or brownish in color. The species is usually found in trees, but it's also seen on fences and also on walls. So it, it's a very common lizard found in the southeastern United States of America. The common box turtle, which is another species of turtle out of the 250 species that we have around the world, all right? The common box turtle, also known as the Eastern box turtle, all right, it looks like a little box. It has a highly domed carapace, which is the upper part of the shell, and a plat storm, which is the lower part of the shell that protects the turtle on their sides. That is hinge. The hinge plus plastron allows the turtle to close up its shell when threatened. So our, 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 like all turtles, whenever they are threatened, they normally put in their limbs, their head inside, the turtles inside to hide from um, predators. The Kamabox turtle is uh, found in a wide range of habitats, including forests and grasslands. It will enter water in order to cool itself down, right? Because remember, these are um, reptiles. They are cold-blooded. So they will, you will see them uh, bracing themselves in the sun so they can control their temperature. And uh, they're uh, exothermal creatures. So they have to be constantly being in the sun and then dipping themselves in water so as to uh, balance off their temperature as time progress. Okay. Um, all right. So remember, we are still in the in the section of fifteen reptiles. All right. Now, this this set of these other five, they are found in the in the UK. All right. I, I again, I try to diversify between the different regions that uh, we are supposed to be giving these honors to, including our own Belize um, honor. It says slow worms. Now, this is quite fascinating because it, uh, it, though it's named slow worm, but it's actually a reptile. Our legless lizards with an average length of 40 centimeters. And here's an example of what it looks like. All right. Their color ranges from gray to brown and their scales appear shiny and smooth. Males are typically smaller than females. All right. In, in any other species that you would find, you would find that the female is much bigger than that of the males. All right. Some of them also have blue spots. Meanwhile, females bear a black stripe on their back and have dark brown flanks. All right. Juveniles look like females, but sport a black spot on top of their head. They are found in most grassy, grassy areas, sorry, woodland and even gardens. So, I mean, if you were to see this creature here, you would think it's a snake, but it's not, it doesn't classify under the snake. Um, is, is classified under the lizard, okay? I need to say, my brother- Okay, common lizard, yes. I need to say, I need to say that I have um, at least two or three of these in my garden. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you see? So it, it's something it's something that can be seen uh, distributed throughout the, the UK, all right? Now the common lizards, all right, they, they are distributed widely over the UK and I, I, I I perhaps would know that some of those who live around the area would um, be able to see, have seen many of these around, all right? These creatures are not just the most common lizards in the UK, they're also the most common reptiles in the country. Common lizards greatly vary in color, gray, brown, green, yellow, and even black, all right? Now, they, now you might be asking, you know, how we serve an amazing God. A god that is, I mean, diversity in its color, its shape, looks, right? So we have a great creator, and, and, and these creatures only remind us of, of that, all right? Now, males tend to have yellow, orange, red, or white undersides, while females usually have a gray or green. They live in very hab habitats uh, from moors and heaths of ditches and sea cliffs. All right, so they live most in the rocky areas, uh, buried in a, a bit of grassy area as well. So you will find this uh, across and distributed throughout the UK. 
Now, the sun lizards, again, this is another one I saw in, in Animal Planet. Um, quite beautiful lizard, green with a bit of brownish in between. They grow up to about 25 centimeters in, in length. All right, they, they are mostly brown in color with distinct eye spots. All right, dark patches of circles with light um, centers on their back and flanks. All right, flanks mean to the, to, the, to the sides. During the mating season, the flanks of male lizards turn bright green. In other words, the side, if you notice, there's one, there's a picture showing that it's just this bright, beautiful greenish color whenever the, it, the mating season begins. Now, their name suggests sun lizards live in heat with sandy soils and areas with sand dunes. Females lay the eggs on the sandy burrows. The, these lizards are rare in the UK. Their population is confined in areas like Hemisphere and Dorset, which are also areas in the, in the UK. All right. So again, these are magnificent creatures. I, I, in, in Animal Planet, I, I learned that these creatures are so, um, I say they, they are so protective over their territory that even if they borrow their, their holes to lay the eggs, they, the female would lay watch almost 24 seven until the hatchlings hatch. All right, so these are, these are amazing lizards that can be found in the UK. All right, now the others. Now, I don't know how many of you guys are afraid of snakes, okay? Uh, I mean, uh, what is your greatest fear? Snake, what would, be, what would be one of your greatest fears that you would say? Anybody, what would be one of your greatest fears? Yeah, we have a question. I know if I were to see the group chat. Yeah, yes. snakes would be one of the number one on the list. Am I right? Uh, probably for me as well. Uh, guys, it's a question for all of us. Let's put it in the chat section. Uh, your, your, what is your greatest fear when it comes to animals? And the answers are slowly coming in. So... Somebody just mentioned, wow, uh, crocs and snakes, somebody said. Crocs and snakes. Now, you would be surprised because, uh, I mean, my wife, when she got to learn about my fear, you, you would perhaps may think it's a, it's, a, it's a, you know, a reptile. But I am afraid of cockroaches. I have a phobia towards those creatures. But snakes, nah, I'm not afraid of snakes. Yeah, I'm afraid of the venomous ones, them, yeah. But snakes, I mean, like the other, which is one of, I mean, if you look at it, just so beautiful, right? But many are afraid of snakes. And the others are one of the most venomous snakes that you would find in the UK. After inferred to as the stocky snakes, others may grow up to 70 centimeters long. Famous for being the only venomous, venomous reptile in the UK. So those who are in the UK area, you would want to be very careful as to where you put your foot whenever going on a mountain hike or, 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 or visiting some rocky terrains, right? Um, famous for being the only venomous reptile in the UK, others are identified through the zigzag or the diamond-shaped markings on their back. If you notice, there's a picture there that shows an example of that. Magnificent, beautiful creature, right? These markings are usually black in males and dark brown in females. That's a slight distinguish between colors there. Others give birth to live young, which do not feed on a live prey until they are a year old. Imagine, these snakes flavor places which have ample amount of sunlight, like open woodland and moorland. The best time to see them is in the month of March when they come out of Brumation. In other words, when they are after the mating season. All right. So again, the others, those of you who are in the UK, please be careful whenever you are going in these woodland areas or moorland areas. All right. When we are making a step, be very careful because you might encounter one of these amazing reptile. Now, the other one is the smooth snakes. All right. Smooth snakes have a dark, crown-like butterfly shape marking. If you notice, there's an example of one, all right? They possess a visible stripe or line on each side of the head too, right? Uh, the, this is a non-venomous snake, by the way, all right? They have flat scale slender bodies. Their coloration ranges from brown to gray. So depending on the species of the smooth snake, 
All right, smooth snakes are extremely rare in the UK. Just like sandy lizards, the population is restricted in sandy heatlands and bugs. And then I, I did a bit of a research as well, and I, I noticed that in the UK, these species are very, they, they have protected areas for them. Just like what we have here in Belize, where we have protective areas protecting certain species because they are going in extinction. And hence the reason why they are a bit rare, because human population kills them. All right. And we're going to be getting into this as uh, this little part of the uh, requirement, you know, that why is it important to the ecosystem? Um, all right, in the month of September and October, uh, much later grass snakes and others, th this is the area where the breeding, they, they will see them more often and the breeding period is gonna be from April to June. So again, in the bre breeding, e breeding season, you're gonna be seeing them much coming out much often from where they are hidden from. Now, in South Africa, we're gonna be going a little bit down south now. Um, the wild bergs, velvet gecko, is a large velvet gecko. You know, again, these are cute little lizards, amazing creatures. The back is light to dark gray brown, usually with irregular pale and dark crossbars, and often with a series of pale vertebral blotches. So if you notice that, that, that they have that distinct pattern that you see there, and its eye, look at this eye, just it, it looks like a marble if you will look at it. All right. A pair of large hard shell eggs are laid in a rock crack under, under barks or under bark, sorry. Personal observation have noted the nocturnal warbirds velvet gecko in a number of habitats from coastal scrub to savanna areas. And I've seen them taking refuge in overhangs, under rocks and even in dried leaves. All right, so this is the area where you're gonna find these creatures hidden or often just lingering around. All right, those of you who are from the South African region or, you know, you would find, you would see, you maybe have bumped into one of these before. All right, now we have the variable skink. Now, when I, when I was doing a bit of research, I said, um, I, was, I was just reading letters. I wasn't making, um, you know, comparing name to picture. But when I came across this one here, look at how it looks like. It looks like a lizard, all right? A look like a snake slash lizard. It's like a two body attached together. A medium sized kink with a rounded snout and a window uh, in each lower lid. Coloration is variable. Uh, the back may be blackish, olive, pale brown, or even red brown, with or without black spots. All right. Um, Grasshoppers, caterpillars, and termite spiders, and exceptional cases, other lizards. This is where they feed, where they, where they feed on. One often difficult to identify due to variation in color, hence the name. This is nonetheless one of the most common and widespread of the skinks, all right? The variable skinks. Now, we move on now to the other one, which is the Southern Vine Snake, which is also known as the Twig Snake or the Bird Snake. And you will see this here. It's a very slim, slim, it's a very thin snake. All right. It has a lance shaped head and large eyes with keyhole shaped pupils. If you notice the eye, the pupil of this snake is very, very thin. And if you were to pa pass by one of the trees, and you would hardly even recognize it because of its shape and its coloration that it has, it can easily be hidden, um, you know, in, in the treetops where it mostly spends most of its time. Okay, um, the tail is a very long, has a very long tail. The body is a twig like color, pre skilled by envenomation. And in other words, it bites with a little bit of venom. Okay, the vine snake is also known as a twig snake for its resemblance to small branches on trees and places and places called the bird snake for its occasional habit of preying on small birds. All right. So again, these are magnificent creatures you're gonna be finding. And by the way, you see its head, it can swallow a bird that could be twice the size of its head. And its body is so elongated, it can stretch. It has an elasticity that it can stretch, that it can just prey on one, one, one prey at a time. Uh, according to researchers, with this creature, whenever it digests, it takes approximately four days for him to digest before he goes to another meal. 
or oh, amazing, right? Another amazing uh, creature that exists. All right, this is another one, the hinged tortoise found in the South African region or the African region, okay? There we have it. That's a picture of the hinge uh, tortoise, okay? A minimum size tortoise with a smooth depressed carapace with a well-developed hinge, all right? Now, how many of you guys out there, um, if you were to choose to be one of these reptiles, being a turtle, a lizard, or a snake, what would it be? Right, if you had the option to choose between these uh, 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 reptiles, what, what would it be? How, how about one? Why would you think you would choose that particular reptile? And just a question to prompt as you go there. Very interesting question for all of us guys. Let's use the chat. You know, if you had to choose, which one would you choose? If it is me, I'm not even sure now. Pasta, but which one would you choose? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'll go with the camouflage snake, man. The green one, the green one, you know? <laughs> okay, okay, the vine snake. Oh, we have the answers, Pasta. Pasta, we have answers yeah. in the Zoom. Uh, yeah, 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 crocodile, crocodile, snake. Uh, man, we have answers coming up here at, at the zoo. Uh, all when right. It to, when it comes to others, we have a, uh, uh, well, it's, uh, yeah, it's every, well, everybody chose something different for sure. So, yeah, let's go ahead. Okay. So, uh, uh, amazing, right? Interesting. What reptile would you choose? I, I'll be honest with you. I want to be the black mamba. It's the fastest snake that you would find. All right, we're going to be talking a little bit about that and to us why I would choose that as my answer. But let's continue on. Uh, the the flat neck chameleon. I don't know. Chameleon has the, it's a very unique species of of lizard. You know, the flat neck chameleon is a large chameleon with a continuous crest of small white triangular tuberculosis in the throat and belly. If you notice there, there's a little spots that you may see around. Now, eggs development takes about three to four months. You imagine that? Quite unique creature, right? The eggs alone, three to four months. The female becomes bloated with 25 to 50 small eggs that fits inside of her, all right? The eggs may take about 377 days to hatch in the wild. Now, sex identification is relatively easy in the flap neck chameleon with the males having a broadness at the base of their tails and also have a spur growing out from the back of each hind foot. That's how you can identify between the male and the female, all right? And they are distributed widely in tropical and Southern Africa. That's where you're gonna be finding this amazing little creature here. Now, in our next part of our, our, our um, requirement, we are going to be identifying five venomous snakes. Now, these ones I'm mentioning um, to you uh, for this morning is a variety of between the three regions. All right, you will be able to finish up by researching um, uh, the other four in your uh, particular region so you can complete that particular honor. All right, or oh, that particular requirement, sorry. Now, Venomous reptiles. Now we all, whenever we hear about venom, sometimes it moves us, all right? Now, which reptile do you believe is the most venomous reptile? That's a question to be thrown out there, right? Think about a reptile that you believe has the deadliest, you know, venom that can exist. Some may say the cobra, um, some may say the rattlesnake, but here is a compilation of a few and where you may find some of them. All right, and we can see some of them are coming in the group chat, the, uh, in the chat group. There, there are several mentioning of the different kind of species that they believe uh, has the most venomous snakes, right? Or, or, or reptile, rather say. Now, the North America, timber rattlesnake, all right? If you look at the picture, just, just by the way it looks, it looks just so scary and just so menacing. I mean, the Eastern timber rattlesnake lives east of the Mississippi River in the Northeastern states. 
except for the most northern parts, including most of the Great Lakes region. All right. And where would you find, according to the requirement, the, the other requirement is that where would you find its fangs or where the fangs are located? Well, for the timber rattlesnake, it, its fangs is located on the upper part of the jaw. Sometimes they extend to about three to four inches in length. All right. Now, I mean, one bite from this snake, it's com it, it can it does, does a, a trap of its venom can kill approximately five horses in less than just 30 minutes. Now, it is very lethal. Uh, getting bitten uh, by a timber rattlesnake to human, uh, you know, it's about from every five, about two persons get bitten every year from this um, rattlesnake, the timber rattlesnake. All right, so those of you who are living maybe in the North American region, all right, especially in the where it says the, the Mississippi River, you have to be very careful, all right, where you put your foot, because, I mean, we won't want you to have a life-threatening um, situation going on there, okay? Our next venomous um, reptile in the list would be the adder, all right, in the United Kingdom. For the United Kingdom area, the adder is the most venomous snake found in that region found across the country except for the Isles of Scilly and Channel Islands, Northern Ireland, and the Isle of Man. All right, the location of this is fangs fold up against the roof, of the, which is the upper part of the jaw of the snake. That's where you're going to find its fangs. And again, the other is so lethal. I mean, it's classified to be almost the fourth in the list of the animal kingdom when it comes to its venom. All right? Does something for you to, to think of, right? So pe folks, we need to be very careful as to where we put our feet, right? Now, this other one is very, very famous to the African region. The Africa region is the, the Africa black mamba, all right? Just look and looking at it, I mean, it's just poison, poison in your head, all right? The black mambas live in the savannas and rocky hills of Southern and Eastern Africa, all right? And by the way, the black mamba is considered to be the fastest snake on earth, all right? It is so fast and it's highly lethal. It, it, it has a neurotoxin venom. Neurotoxin means to say that it attacks the central nervous system, which paralyzes the whole body if you're getting bitten by the snake. And also, it Okay, it takes hemotoxin. In other words, it destroys every single cell within your body. So it deteriorates your body. So you won't want to come across this particular snake. All right. So we are telling you guys this information because if you want to visit maybe one of our Belizean, uh, you know, or one of our Belizean, Belizean pathfinders, or let's say one of our North American pathfinders who want to go and venture out and doing missionary outreach in Africa, and you come across this area, you need to look out for these creatures because they are very, very venomous, right? So the black mamba is has its fangs in the upper jaw, all right? It, it's a very fascinating snake to see from a distance. Now, this is where it's much, way much more important. And I, I want to, from all the other parts of the requirements, this is where I believe even our Belizean pathfinders and all our pathfinders across the world need to pay very keen attention because um, apart from knowing and just looking at these marvelous snakes, we are to, this is the application part of the honor. All right, so a question out there before I even proceed. What do you think is the first thing that we need to do in case we get bitten by a venomous snake? What is the first thing that we must do? Anybody? All right, a question follow us. Again, please uh, type it in the chat section. Uh, my brother, you, you know, why not proceed? And as the answers come through, we'll read them to you. Okay, That's right. sure. So, these are a few steps. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to simply summarize them because uh, it, when you go back and review the video, then you perhaps want to pause and play the video as you go along with the presentation, okay? So for time purposes, let's proceed. So the first thing we need to do is protect the patient. 
all right? Just ensure that the, 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 you, you have moved the patient to a secure location so it can be far from where the snake, uh, perhaps that the stick can be still lingering around, all right? And if the snake is not being found, do not waste your time trying to look for the, for the, um, for the snake and what's that. Take action immediately, right? So first of all, we need to calm the patient. We need to make, we are sure that the patient is gonna be okay and being given words of assurance, right? Protecting the patient is number one. The other one, we need to keep the victim calm as possible, all right? Because whenever a person is frightened, his heartbeat begins to accelerate and that allows the venom to go into your bloodstream very quickly. So what by calming the individual, it would re, your, your heart rate would be less and therefore the blood, the, uh, the blood supply of the, that has the venom in it would take a bit longer to reach areas where it can cause permanent damage, all right? So we need to calm the individual down. Make sure to keep the bitten limb in a functional position and below the victim's heart level so as to minimize blood returning to the heart and other organs of the body, which is another great procedure to do, all right? Uh, this is another important one. Do not give the patient anything to eat or drink, all right? This is espe especially this, the, the consumable alcohol, a known vasolidator, because many people who, uh, per, let's say a, a, the, a, a drunk person would come, he would have, have a higher risk of dying quickly from the snake bite than a normal average person, right? Do not administer stimulants or pain medications to the victim. So the moment you see the person having pain and because of a snake bite, please do not do the error in giving that person any sort of medication unless specifically directed to do so by a physician, all right, by a doctor. Now, remove any items or clothing which may constrict the bitten or the slim ear because you will want to keep that little small blood flow going as time progresses. All right, do not incise, do not bite into the cut. Many, I've seen many people who practice whereby they go and hut the knife, like in the movies, they hut the knife and they begin to cut open where the person has been bitten and they begin to suck out the blood. Avoid that, all right? We need to avoid those procedures, okay? Um, in just a few moments now, I'm gonna be showing you guys a few steps that you can take whenever doing or whenever applying or helping somebody with a sneak bite. All right, we have one, two, three, four, five, six procedures. I'm not gonna be going through all of them. You can take some time out whenever you're reviewing the video so you can pause and you can be able to look at each one of them as time progresses. All right, so, I, so you can be able to write down your answers for your requirements, all right? Now, what should you do in case of a snake bite by a non-venomous snake? All right, let's say you get a, a snake bite, but it's a type of species that is not um, venomous. What should you do? Well, treat it as if though it's a venomous snake, all right? Clean the wound, cover it with a sterile bandage, and then immediately seek medical attention because sometimes persons can be allergic to, to some of the non-venomous snake bites out there, all right? So you would perhaps want to take that into consideration. Treat it as if though it is a, a, a regular um, non, I'm sorry, venomous snake bite. But of course, just by cleaning the wound and what's that, these are just basic steps that you would like to take before taking the person to seek medical attention. Now, another part of the honor says that we need to look, search on, on uh, choose between finding uh, the history of one of the reptiles. And I chose the history of the leopard gecko, which is an amazing creature. If you ask me, looking at his marble looking eyes and it's pretty, you know, leopard colored skin. Here's a better example of one. Uh, become sexually mature between 10 to 14 months of age. All right, the leopard gecko gender can be determined once the animal reaches an adult length. All right, um, from March to September, this is a season where they begin as early as uh, January and finish as late October. That's where you're gonna be seeing much, much of the breeding um, time happening. 30 days later, the female will lay one or two eggs with a leathery shell. Clutches of two eggs will then be laid every two weeks to monthly throughout the rest of the mating season. Imagine, vary from each gecko according to age, uh, the females gradually laying fewer eggs with, with, as time progress, all right? 
Uh, like many other laying reptiles, the, the sex of leopard geckos are determined by incubation temperature. All right, eggs incubated 79, depending on, in other words, it is simply saying that depending upon the temperatures of the egg and how they are produced, that will determine which is the female, which is the egg, depending on how they hatch based upon these temperatures. Okay, again, you can quickly go back to the video after it's been posted up, so you can review the history of the um, gecko, of the leopard gecko. You can choose one of your own country's one, and you can be able to research upon the history of that particular reptile that you so choose or you so desire. All right, there's a brief comparison now. Here's some brief comparison that you would like to make in regards to, which is another requirement, by the way. You need to compare lizards, snakes, turtles, crocodiles based upon the eyes, ears, teeth, heart, lungs, limbs, tails, and scales. And here's just a broad, um, you know, comparison on the table format as to how you would make this comparison. And again, you can quickly review back this video. You pause it there so you can complete the honor when it comes to the comparison section, all right? And if you notice, each of them have a diverse, um, have diverse characteristics in regards to each of these aspects of the reptile nature. Now, do's and don'ts if you will keep a reptile as a pet, all right? There, here are some lists of things that you can do all right, again, you can pause the video whenever reviewing it. These are just a, a summer that was chosen from off, uh, from off one of the website that I found. Okay, so you can view what you can do if you want to keep a reptile as a pet and also what not to do in case of, you know, a, 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 whenever you're having a, a reptile as a pet. All right, so you can follow these, these two categories. All right, what to do, what not to do whenever uh, having a reptile as a pet, okay? Now, inspiring Bible stories. This is where I'm gonna be coming up to an end. Um, I'm gonna be sharing two Bible stories. There are many out there, but these are just two that I uh, chose to share with you guys as a spiritual aspect of this honor. The first of which, that if you can recall, what Bible, um, what Bible story had a reptile involved in it. You can always message in the group chat, in, in, in Facebook. You can always put those stories out there that you think has a reptile story behind it. But I'm gonna simply share two of them and that's as follows. Just by looking at this picture, you can already tell I am talking about Adam and Eve, right? That is found in Genesis chapter three. Reptile was in, in, involved there when the, the snake, you know, the snake, trick the Eve into eating the, the, the fruit, the, for, on, the for, forbidden fruit. That's one story. Now looking at this picture, what story that is? Again, you can put it there on the chat and due to time, all right? This story is no other than Moses and his staff turning into a snake before Pharaoh in the book of Exodus chapter 4, all right? And there are other stories there. For instance, the story with the apostle Paul when he got a snake bite and he just shook off the snake, the venomous snake, and they thought that he would have died by that snake and he didn't die. So there are other stories out there that you can find that has had some, for some uh, way or the other, they have mentioned a reptile as a, a, rep a story representing, inspiring story using reptile, sorry. Okay, so I do hope that you enjoyed um, some of these amazing, fascinating creatures. And I do hope that you were blessed. And you can feel free to review the video as you pause and play, as you continue answering your honors as we proceed. Thank you very much, viewers. Thank you very much, Pathfinders. And I hope that you have learned something valuable. Hey, thanks.